Abigail couldn't close her eyes all night. She felt anxious in her soul. Troubling thoughts stung at her heart like a swarm of persistent bees, and there was no escape from them. Abigail was worn out, and as soon as her husband left for work in the morning, she dialed her mother's phone number. I have a feeling that Nicholas might be seeing someone else. Abigail shared her suspicions with her mother, Megan. Do you really think Nicholas has a lover? The woman exclaimed. It's hard to believe because he loves you so much. There has always been harmony between you that everyone envied. That was before, now I'm not so sure about his feelings. I suspect he's being unfaithful to me, Abigail replied. Why do you think that, dear? Do you have any reason to doubt your husband's loyalty? Megan inquired. He's been acting strangely lately, not like his usual self. He seems mentally distant, even when he's physically present. I feel like he's hiding something from me, her daughter answered. Don't jump to conclusions. Maybe he's just dealing with some business problems, and Nicholas doesn't want to burden you with his issues. You know how caring he is. He tries to protect you from all sorts of problems. Don't be pessimistic. Don't think negatively. You should trust your husband. I'm trying my best to keep my composure and hold myself together, but it's difficult, Abigail sighed. I sense something is happening with him. He's distancing himself from me. I think both of you are just exhausted. So many troubles have piled up recently. Your mother-in-law's death, the unsuccessful IVF. You both need a proper break and some quality time together. Bring me a grandchild for the weekend, and you two can go to a retreat, Megan suggested. I would love to, but it's not possible. Tomorrow, Nicholas is leaving for a business trip for several days. I wanted to go with him, but he tactfully avoided my company. Although before, Nicholas was always happy when I accompanied him on his work trips, Abigail noted with bitterness. Don't be disheartened, dear. I'm sure there's an explanation for your husband's distance. Everything will work out, you'll see. Distract yourself from these troubling thoughts and push them away. Engage in something, meet up with your friends, go shopping, or visit the hair salon. Nothing lifts your spirits like a new dress or a new hairstyle. Megan bid farewell to Abigail and hung up the phone. Her daughter's words had deeply unsettled her. She considered her daughter's marriage to be a happy and successful one. Megan was immensely pleased that her daughter had managed to build such a strong and harmonious bond. She didn't want to believe that their marriage had developed a crack. Abigail was Megan's only child. Megan had divorced her husband, Trevor, when their daughter was seven years old. Her ex-husband was a military man, a tall and handsome man with what is now called a rugged appearance. He had a way of charming women, and the fairer sex was drawn to him like a magnet. No matter where fate took the young family, Trevor always found a way to engage in an affair. Friends and well-wishers regularly reported his bold escapades and romantic conquests to Megan. Megan had hoped that her husband would eventually settle down and the birth of their daughter would influence his wayward behavior. But that was not the case. Years went by, and Trevor continued to pursue every skirt he encountered. For a long time, Megan turned a blind eye to her husband's numerous affairs to preserve their family unit, but the final straw was the news of another one of his flings getting pregnant. Megan noticed that her husband had been spending more and more time in the infirmary lately. In addition to headache pills, a young nurse had offered him something extra. It's better to be a single mother than to live under the same roof with a traitor, Megan reasoned and filed for divorce. The decision was not easy for her, as she had always believed that family was the most important value in a person's life. However, Megan had to divorce her husband primarily for the happiness of the one she loved most in the world, her growing daughter. Whether we like it or not, 
We raise our children through our behavior and example. Megan didn't want her daughter to consider a womanizing father as the norm of life. Before leaving the military base for good, Megan couldn't resist peeking into the infirmary. She wanted to look the thief who had invaded her home in the eye. What do you want here? The young nurse asked when the visitor entered the treatment room without knocking. The young woman cast a haughty glance at Megan and proudly lifted her chin. From her facial expression, it was clear that she knew precisely who stood before her. Megan couldn't help but notice that this girl had an attractive eastern appearance, tan skin, a slender figure, tea-colored eyes, and expressive cheekbones, a real queen. Few men would be able to resist such a beauty. Yes, I came to look into your shameless eyes. Aren't you ashamed of fooling around with someone else's husband? I'm not fooling around with Trevor, as you put it. We share a mutual love. Oh, is that so? And it seems my daughter and I were just in the way of your noble feelings, Megan taunted. It's not my fault that I met a man burdened with a family. The girl scoffed. Besides, as far as I know, that obstacle has already been removed. You filed for divorce and are leaving. I, on the other hand, am planning to marry Trevor, have a child, and live happily ever after. It's unlikely you'll succeed, Megan remarked. Why not? The girl raised her black eyebrows. Don't compare me to yourself. Just because it didn't work out with you and him doesn't mean I'll be unsuccessful. If I were in your place, I wouldn't rely on someone like him. If he's used to deception, he's unlikely to change overnight. Trevor is unfaithful by nature, and he'll cheat on you just like he did on me, said the ex-wife. We'll see about that. He just didn't love you, that's why he strayed. It'll be different with me, the nurse declared. You're mistaken. Trevor loved me, but it didn't stop him from being unfaithful. Your feelings make you hope that your love will change him and make him loyal to you. But that's a delusion. You can't straighten a hunchback. You will remember my words, Megan said and left the room. You're just jealous of me because you lost. The audacious rival shouted after her. After parting ways with her unfaithful husband, Megan raised Abigail on her own, trying to give her the very best. She was a beautiful woman, and she occasionally had casual romances. However, she had no intention of getting married again. She focused entirely on her child, and her daughter grew up to be intelligent and beautiful, bringing joy to her mother. Megan spared no effort or financial resources for her only child. The girl had everything, stylish clothes, extracurricular activities, tutors, and yearly trips to the seaside. My little angel called Abigail the infinitely loving mother. She felt an overwhelming sense of pride when looking at her daughter. God had not skimped on the girl's looks, and from an early age, she was a marvel of beauty. Blue eyes, wheat-colored hair, and absolute heavenly creation. A portrait of Abigail even hung as an advertisement in the display window of the local city photo studio, filling her mother with pride. So, it's not surprising that Megan's daughter was popular among the boys from the very first grade. She had no shortage of admirers. One carried her school bag, another carried her gym shoes, a third held her umbrella, and the home phone was constantly ringing with calls while the entrance was adorned with love messages addressed to Abigail. Don't waste yourself on trivialities. From all your numerous admirers, you must choose one, the most worthy, Megan taught her growing daughter. Megan and her daughter had developed a close, trusting relationship and a strong emotional bond. Abigail knew that her mother accepted and loved her unconditionally. When she yelled, threw tantrums, didn't listen, misbehaved, or demanded more, Megan's patience and boundless love created a powerful support system on which her daughter would rely throughout her life. Her mother was an authority and a role model for Abigail. 
She always sought her mother's advice, shared her secrets, and listened to her opinions. So, when Abigail, at the age of 23, fell in love with Nicholas during her fourth year of college, she immediately introduced her suitor to her mother. I think Nicholas is a worthy young man. I believe he's a good fit for you, Megan approved of her daughter's choice back then, and her positive assessment meant a lot. Megan genuinely liked Nicholas. He was five years older than Abigail, had already graduated from a finance academy, and held a managerial position in a small commercial firm. I don't intend to rest on my laurels. Perhaps it sounds immodest, but I have big plans, which I'm confident are entirely achievable. In the future, I plan to start my own business and develop in the financial sector, the young man confessed. Megan approved of the young man's healthy ambitions. Her daughter's suitor seemed to her a serious and goal-oriented man with conservative views on life. Home and family are what I prioritize, Nicholas declared during his introduction to his future mother-in-law, which finally won her over. Megan gave her blessing to the marriage, as she was confident that Nicholas was an excellent son-in-law candidate. She believed he would take good care of her beloved daughter. At the palace where the wedding ceremony took place, Megan cried tears of happiness. Abigail looked extraordinarily beautiful in her white wedding gown. The groom looked at the bride with eyes full of love and adoration. Megan was certain that with such a husband, her Abigail would live happily ever after. A year after the wedding, Abigail gave birth to their son, Duke. Nicholas provided for his family in comfort, and they lacked nothing. He treated his wife like a queen, and he adored their son. Abigail's family life was flourishing, and she couldn't have been happier. However, there was one cause for concern. Abigail and Nicholas desperately longed for more children, but the long-awaited pregnancy just wouldn't happen. The couple underwent all the necessary medical examinations possible, but the tests didn't reveal any health issues. The doctors simply shrugged. After seven years of unsuccessful attempts to conceive, the couple turned to IVF, in vitro fertilization. However, the procedure was unsuccessful, none of the two implanted embryos took. Abigail struggled to cope with the failed operation and the fact that she couldn't give Duke a little brother or sister. Her husband was an excellent father, and she knew how much he dreamed of having a large and loving family. Although it was psychologically challenging for her, Abigail decided to try IVF once more a year later. Unfortunately, it also yielded no results. After the third unsuccessful implantation, the young woman became disheartened. Last summer, Abigail and Nicholas celebrated their first milestone anniversary of their marriage, 10 years of happy family life. Megan sat at the festive table in honor of her daughter's tin wedding, content and joyful. She was at ease with her child's fate, but after the last call from Abigail, a sense of unease crept into her heart. Could it be that my Abigail will also suffer the fate of a deceived wife and divorcee, just like I once did? Megan worried. Waking up the next day after her conversation with Abigail, Megan looked out the window. There was not a cloud in the sky. It seemed like the day promised to be sunny and rain-free. In their town, at last, after weeks of rain, the long-awaited Indian summer had arrived. Megan decided not to miss the chance to enjoy the warm day. She took her beloved grandson Duke and headed to the park, which was located in the city center. Megan tried to convince her daughter to come along and have some fun, but she wasn't in the mood. The journey to the park took 40 minutes. They got off at the bus stop and walked down the street when suddenly Megan noticed her son-in-law's car. It can't be. What is Nicholas doing here? He went on a business trip, she wondered. But there couldn't be any mistake. It was her dear son-in-law. He's really pushing his luck, that Casanova, just like my lustful ex-husband, she muttered in frustration. 
She was about to approach her son-in-law to catch him red-handed, but her grandson made her stop halfway. She didn't want the boy to witness how low his father had fallen. However, Megan couldn't wait to find out who her son-in-law was involved with. Megan skillfully hid behind a massive column and pulled her grandson behind her. From her hiding place, she continued to observe. Grandma, are we, are we hiding from someone? Duke was surprised. Yeah, pretend we're playing spies. Stay down and stay down. Megan's mind flashed with the straight thought that maybe things weren't what they seemed at first glance. That her brother-in-law's plans might have changed and he hadn't gone anywhere. Moments later, Nicholas emerged from the interior of the car with the petite blonde. He gently put his arm around her waist and watched her with eyes full of tenderness. Almost as he had once looked at his bride at her wedding. Megan was almost speechless. Yes, that profiteer is no more than 18 years old. How could he get mixed up with a minor? What a scumbag. A filthy seducer. Megan was horrified. Nicholas and his companion smiled at each other, holding hands tightly. The woman's heart smelled evil, but there was still hope in her soul for a favorable outcome to the whole affair. Or maybe this girl is his subordinate. For example, some trainee student? She suggested. In an instant, the son-in-law and the blonde, laughing joyfully, headed hand in hand towards the hotel building, thereby confirming the worst suspicion that had arisen in Megan's heart. I doubt that students do their internships in hotel rooms these days, the woman remarked. She had to admit that her son-in-law was having an affair behind her daughter's back. There was no doubt left that Nicholas was cheating on Abigail. Since the unpleasant truth had been revealed to Megan, she couldn't find peace. Questions plagued her, such as how long has Nicholas had this affair? How serious is it with his mistress? Megan spent a lot of time with her daughter's family. When her grandchild was little, she often helped and lived with them for weeks at a time. The life of her daughter and her husband was right in front of her, and she couldn't even imagine that Nicholas could be unfaithful. All these years, she considered him a faithful and reliable man, a decent family man. But from the day she noticed him with someone else, Megan did nothing but find evidence of her son-in-law's unfaithfulness. A few days after the trip to the city center, when Megan visited her daughter's house, she found light female hairs on Nicholas's jacket, which hung in the hallway. These are clearly traces of that young girl, the woman exclaimed in displeasure. Both Nicholas's jacket and coat were permeated with the scent of another woman's perfume. Awfully sweet smell. My daughter doesn't use such perfume, Megan noted to herself. She also noticed that her son-in-law always had his mobile phone in hand, even when he was taking a shower. And when he sat down to eat at the table, he placed the screen face down. Well, isn't all of this suspicious? He's clearly hiding something, the observant woman guessed. She used to consider herself a good mother-in-law, trying not to interfere in the lives of the young couple and refraining from giving them advice. However, after what she had recently learned, keeping silent became increasingly difficult with each passing day. Megan's first thought was to talk openly with her daughter, to tell her everything she had seen and to open her eyes to her husband. After all, bitter truth is better than sweet lies, and forewarned is forearmed. However, upon reflection, the woman began to doubt this idea. Do I have the right to meddle in their family? She thought, I could potentially disrupt their marriage with my interference. And as it has long been known, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Moreover, Megan did not want to cause her daughter pain, as she knew from her own bitter experience how unbearable it is to know that you have been betrayed and replaced by someone else. And perhaps, it's not as tragic as it seems at first glance, she pondered. 
Nicholas will get through this so-called midlife crisis, come to his senses, and everything will return to normal. Megan tried to convince herself that it was better not to inform Abigail. However, on the other hand, she fully understood that all secrets, sooner or later, become apparent. Her daughter, sooner or later, would surely find out about her husband's young lover. And if my daughter learns of the affair from someone else, won't she consider me a traitor, her own mother, the woman wondered. Abigail is a sensitive and vulnerable person. She may resent me for knowing everything but keeping silent, as if I were complicit in her husband's actions. Megan knew her daughter well. Abigail was a very trusting person. She loved her husband with all her heart, and it was even frightening to imagine how devastating the truth would be for her. Megan couldn't consciously inflict pain on her beloved child. Breaking a family is not an easy matter. Abigail might divorce Nicholas, but how will she live without him? The woman didn't understand. She's not only emotionally attached to him, but, let's be honest, financially dependent on him as well. Nicholas works, supports the family comfortably, and fulfills every whim of Abigail and Duke. Her daughter and grandson lack for nothing. Without him, it will be a challenge, as she has never worked a day in her life. And what about my grandson? If my son-in-law leaves the family, my grandson will be without his biological father, which is completely unacceptable. Duke adores him. He rushes to him with cries of daddy when he returns from work. Or from his lover. Megan realized that the revealed truth would shatter not only her beloved daughter's heart, but also the little heart of her grandson. Do they deserve this? She thought. I cannot take on the role of the executioner. Megan concluded. A couple of weeks after the trip to the city center, Megan, along with her daughter's family, headed to the countryside for a weekend getaway. She sat in the back seat of her son-in-law's car with her grandson, while his wife sat in the front passenger seat as usual. Nicholas, what's this? Abigail asked her husband, handing over a tube of lipstick she had picked up from the floor. Megan tensed up, practically sinking into her seat in anticipation of the revelation. If she wanted, she could theoretically save the situation by claiming that the lipstick was hers. However, she had never in her life used such a vibrant pink shade, and Abigail would never believe such an obvious lie. The truth is about to come out. Megan thought, experiencing both relief and fear at the same time. Yes, I gave my subordinate a ride to the subway. Her car broke down. I kindly offered to give her a lift. She probably dropped it, her son-in-law calmly replied. Well, sly one. Megan thought to herself. Look at how smoothly he got out of that one. Didn't even bat an eye. Abigail nodded, fell silent, and didn't ask her husband any more questions, changing the subject. Did Abigail actually believe that story? Or did she decide to play innocent for the sake of preserving the family? Megan wondered. She had another thought of catching the moment and initiating an open conversation with Nicholas. Threaten him that if he didn't stop his affair, she would tell her daughter everything. And if he came to his senses and ended the affair, she would keep the secret to her grave. That way, Abigail would never find out, at least not from her own mother. But do I have the right to speak to an adult like that? The woman pondered. To chastise him like a child, set conditions and ultimatums, all of that could lead to conflict and strained relations. And I don't want that. Nicholas had always treated his mother-in-law with respect and never missed an opportunity to openly admire her resilience. Only someone as strong and brave as you could leave with a child into the unknown, choosing a path of uncertainty to escape the fate of a perpetually humiliated, deceived wife, he exclaimed. You raised Abigail on your own to be a remarkable person, and I'm immensely grateful to you for that. She's a wonderful wife and an excellent mother just like you. 
There was complete understanding between the son-in-law and the mother-in-law. Their relationship was far from the stereotypical jokes. They were positive, even friendly, and built on mutual respect. Nicholas was generous with gifts for Megan, presenting her with a refrigerator, a washing machine, and even a television. Recently, he had even bought a piece of land and a luxurious country house specifically for his beloved mother-in-law. After all, Megan had dreamed of it for so long. So, Megan felt somewhat indebted to him. She didn't know what to do. A mother's heart was torn to pieces. She had cursed the day she uncovered her deceitful son-in-law's ugly secret a hundred times. Megan didn't know what to do. And after much deliberation, she made the difficult decision to tell Abigail everything. She understood that it wasn't right to meddle in other people's relationships, but this concerned her only daughter's personal life. And she had never let any harm come to her child, and this time was no exception. Gathering her thoughts, Megan paid a visit to her daughter when Nicholas was at work. My dear, there's something I must confess to you. Unfortunately, your concerns about your husband were not unfounded, the mother began. What do you mean, Mom? A month ago, I ran into Nicholas in the city center, and he wasn't on a business trip, as he told you. He was enjoying his time with a young blonde, Megan said quietly. I knew it, exclaimed Abigail. Things were going too well for us. Not long ago, I was so happy in our marriage, even though I couldn't manage to have a second child. I thought our love could overcome any adversity, that we could handle all our problems together. We always understood each other and believed that our bond was unbreakable and we were inseparable. But everything has changed. Tears welled up in Abigail's eyes. Megan's heart ached, and it was unbearable for her to see her precious daughter suffering and tormented. A couple of months ago, I started noticing strange behavior in Nicholas, Abigail continued. He'd come home from work and immediately sit down at his laptop. He paid no attention to me and Duke. We used to spend our evenings together, playing board games, going for walks, and watching movies. Now, all of Nicholas's time is occupied, and he has no time for his own family. He doesn't even have dinner with us anymore. He eats alone, staring at his computer screen. Do you think he's in contact with her? Megan asked. Most likely, Abigail speculated. Nicholas has become unreasonably happy, practically glowing. I've asked him many times what he's up to, but he only brushed off my inquiries. I understood immediately that he was hiding something, as we've never kept secrets from each other before. Of course, it raised a lot of questions for me, and I suspected him of having an affair. But I was still holding on to hope, hoping I was wrong about it. But you've confirmed my worst fears today. Abigail loved Nicholas deeply. She understood that over the years of marriage, the passion and emotions might have faded, and the spouse's feelings might have lost some of their intensity. Moreover, all the trials they had been through with the IVF had taken a toll on both of them. But she thought that after all they had been through, there was something more profound. Something much more significant. Abigail believed that she and Nicholas had truly become kindred spirits, and their marriage was built on complete trust and respect. So it turns out I was deeply mistaken about us, and it was all just my imagination. Abigail mused sadly. Thoughts of her husband's possible infidelity tormented Abigail, tortured her soul, and caused her unbearable pain. Mommy, you've been so sad lately, ten-year-old Duke noticed. You're growing up so fast, Abigail thought as she ruffled her son's unruly hair. You look so much like your father. Will I have to raise you without your dad? Abigail remained silent for a while, waiting and hoping that everything would somehow resolve itself. But her mother's visit and the truth that had come to light pushed her toward decisive action. 
I can't go on like this anymore, she confessed. If I don't talk to Nicholas today, I'll completely lose my mind. Just don't jump to conclusions, Megan requested. Getting worked up with emotions can easily make things worse. In the evening, Nicholas returned home and, as usual, took his dinner plate and headed toward his laptop. However, Abigail stood in his way. What's going on? he asked, genuinely surprised. If you've fallen in love with someone else, don't be a coward. Tell me about it directly, looking me in the eye, Abigail said. What are you talking about? What other person? Nicholas protested. Don't worry, I won't create a scene for you. And if you're afraid I'll stop you from seeing Duke, you're mistaken. I won't hinder your communication with Duke. I just ask you to confess everything and not humiliate me any further with this disgusting affair, Abigail's voice quivered. What nonsense are you talking about? What kind of affair are you imagining? Nicholas exclaimed. Don't play games with me. I already know everything, Abigail said. You have someone else. You're the only one for me, and I have no one else, nor can there be anyone else, her husband assured her. Then who the hell are you messaging with day and night? Abigail asked directly, feeling like she was on the brink of a breakdown. And who did my mother see you with at the hotel when you were supposed to be on a business trip? Who is this young blonde who left her things in our car? Do you think I'm so foolish that I believe that absurd story about a colleague? Nicholas let out a heavy sigh and confessed, that blonde, you see, she's not a lover. She's my daughter. I should have told you a long time ago. Abigail stared at her husband in shock. Your daughter? She asked in disbelief. Yes, her name is Rachel, and she's 16, he said. Is this some kind of cruel joke? Abigail couldn't believe her ears. Where did you suddenly get an adult daughter? Do you remember, I once told you that back in my college years, I was madly in love with a woman named Stacy. She became my first true love, Nicholas began. Yes, but your relationship was short-lived. I think she was already committed. Abigail clarified. That's correct, Nicholas nodded. I loved her deeply and I would have married Stacy, but unfortunately, she was already married. Such a faithful wife. Abigail remarked sarcastically. Please, don't judge her too harshly. She got married when she was just 18. It was an arranged marriage by her father, who was over 20 years older than her. He had a construction business that was on the verge of bankruptcy in the 1990s. Stacy's family was on the brink of losing everything they had, their business, properties, and means of livelihood. A business partner promised to resolve all their problems in exchange for the favor of the young girl. Stacy loved her father deeply and was grateful to the man who saved her family from bankruptcy. I can bear with this is what she thought, walking down the aisle with him. And then, our fateful meeting happened. I understand that it may look unattractive and unethical from the outside, but that's life, and sometimes things happen this way. We met and fell in love instantly. And the fact that she was someone else's wife didn't stop you? Abigail exclaimed. That's so immoral. We were both very young and reckless. Nicholas tried to justify his actions. You see, nobody is immune to overwhelming feelings. Can you really control who you fall in love with? You can't tell your heart what to do. Between us, there was a powerful, uncontrollable passion, intense and all-consuming. We were like two people possessed, surrendering to love at every opportunity. Please spare me all these intimate details of your meetings, Abigail interrupted with a gesture. Our meetings were a secret, until one day... Stacy suddenly broke up with me, Nicholas said quietly. It happened unexpectedly, with no prior signs of a breakup. 
I thought she loved me as much as I loved her. I held out hope until the very end that Stacy would eventually leave her husband for me. But then she just disappeared. I couldn't understand what was happening. I was devastated, searching for her, but she was avoiding me. Our separation was extremely hard on me, and it took me a long time to get over it. I started having other relationships, but none of the women I dated could compare to Stacy. Then, five years later, I met you, and my heart was filled with love once again. I've already heard this story of your tragic feelings. There's no point in retelling it to me. But what does it have to do with your daughter? You never mentioned that Stacy was pregnant. You don't mean to say that she had a child with you. Abigail exclaimed. I had no idea about it myself, Nicholas assured his wife. I had already forgotten about Stacy since then, but about half a year ago, I received a message on social media from a 16-year-old girl named Rachel. She wrote to me, claiming to be my biological daughter. I can't believe this, Abigail confessed. How could you not know about her all these years? This news shocked me just as much, I swear to you. Nicholas exclaimed. I had no inkling that my past affair had such a consequence as a child. I won't hide the fact that for a long time after parting ways with Stacy, I was curious about her life. Of course, I heard rumors that she had become a mother, but I could only be happy for her family's happiness. I was certain that she had given birth to a girl with her lawful husband, and I couldn't even imagine that the father of that little girl was none other than me. I wonder, how can you explain Stacy's silence for so long? Abigail asked. It turns out that when she found out about her pregnancy, she was very scared of the prospect of an unsettled life with me. After all, I was still a student at the time, no apartment, no stable job. Just a life of uncertainty and an empty wallet. On the other hand, her husband was well-established, a respectable man who could provide the child with everything. So... After careful consideration and weighing all the pros and cons, Stacy decided to keep my fatherhood a secret from everyone. She gave birth to a daughter and soon after moved to another city with her husband and child. I knew nothing more about her since then. And when I met you, I completely forgot about her. Stacy's husband can only be pitied. He won't have an easy time raising someone else's child for so many years. Why did she decide to reveal the truth now? Abigail asked. She could have continued to keep her dirty secret. She told her daughter the truth when she was 10 years old. By that time, Stacy's lawful husband had gone bankrupt and passed away after a long, painful illness, Nicholas replied. And as Rachel grew up, she decided to find her biological father, which is me. In our age of social media, it wasn't difficult at all, and that's when we started corresponding. Why didn't you tell me all of this right away? It's not a joke or some minor detail. This is your child, Nicholas. Why did you keep this a secret for so long? Abigail expressed her disapproval. I just didn't know how you would react to such a startling piece of news, Nicholas admitted. You have to admit, it's not every day that you find out your husband has an adult daughter. To be honest, I was very afraid of your reaction. I cherish our family, and I'm afraid of losing you more than anything else in the world. How can you be so sure that she's your daughter in the first place? Abigail asked. Maybe you've been deliberately misled and deceived, and you're too quick to believe the words of a stranger. But why would she do that? Nicholas wondered. For the sake of gain, of course. You're the owner of a major company. You have a business, wealth, and status, all tempting targets for scammers. You're their prime catch. Don't you have any doubts about the truth of this heart-wrenching story, worthy of a Brazilian telenovela? 
Why didn't you consider the possibility that this girl might not be your real daughter, but an imposter and a con artist? Abigail questioned. She is my daughter, I'm telling you for sure. And if you don't believe it, you can verify it for yourself, Nicholas said. The man turned on his laptop and proudly showed Abigail Rachel's social media profile. To her great regret, there were no doubts about the girl's relationship with Nicholas. Even without a DNA test, their family resemblance was undeniable, the same eye shape, the same smile, and the ear shape. Even the mole on the girl's cheek was in the same place as Nicholas's. Rachel was a spitting image of her father, perhaps even more so than their son, Duke. Yes, she's practically my clone. Don't you think? Only a thousand times better. Just look at how beautiful she has grown. She's so refined, and her figure is as graceful as a ballerina's. Nicholas exclaimed. Look at her perfect posture. Hearing compliments from her husband about another woman was extremely unpleasant for Abigail. Over the years of marriage, she had grown accustomed to the fact that her husband admired only one woman, his own wife. Now Abigail felt a pang of jealousy. I paid for Rachel's ticket so she could come to our city. Of course, I couldn't bring her to our house, so I booked a hotel room for her. Megan probably saw us near the hotel. I spent two unforgettable days with my daughter. We walked a lot and talked. Afterward, I put her on a plane and sent her back home to her mother. Abigail paused for a moment, trying to process all that she had heard, and finally asked the question that was deeply troubling her. So, what now? What do you intend to do with all of this? Do you want to officially acknowledge this girl? She inquired. Yes, I would like to give her my last name. Ideally, I'd like her to move in with us, Nicholas replied. What do you mean, move in with us? In our house? Abigail exclaimed in amazement. Yes, I offered it to her, but Rachel can't do that right now. She needs to finish college first, and perhaps after that, my daughter will come to study and work. Abigail couldn't believe her ears. How could he offer something to someone without even consulting me, she protested. She was shaking, but it seemed that Nicholas didn't notice and continued as if nothing was wrong. I dream of involving Rachel in my business. I would like to teach her all the intricacies of my company because, eventually, I hope she will take the reins. I believe she has all the qualities of a good manager. What do you mean, pass the reins? What about Duke? He's your legitimate son, your heir. Abigail reminded him. Don't worry, I'm not going to deprive anyone, Nicholas hurried to reassure his wife. All my children will be well taken care of. Duke won't lack anything either. But you just told me that you're planning to hand over the business to this girl. Is that fair? Abigail expressed her disapproval. Understand, I've given my son everything the attention, love, care, and affection. I was there when he was born, attended his birth, and cut the umbilical cord with my own hands. Duke grew up before my eyes. Rachel didn't get any of that. I didn't see her take her first steps, didn't hear her say her first words. I missed so much, and I'm eager to make up for it and compensate for my absence. But this isn't your fault at all. His wife reminded him. All of this is on her mother's conscience. Nobody can blame you for it. But I want this myself. With all my heart, I want to surround Rachel with warmth and fatherly care. Abigail had no desire to listen to any more of this. A wave of indignation welled up in her chest. He's just gone crazy about this Rachel. He'd have been better off with a mistress than this daughter. This rebellious thought suddenly pierced her. Since Nicholas had confessed everything to Abigail, the married life of the couple had become far from ideal. 
They quarreled over trivial matters without any apparent reason, and Abigail realized that the discord in their family was caused by Nicholas's newfound daughter. Abigail, the most important thing is that Nicholas still loves you. Her mother tried to console her. Your family is still strong. You just need to show wisdom and take control of yourself. Since you can't change the situation, you have to accept it as it is. But I can't just accept Nicholas having an illegitimate child. Abigail cried. This girl is stealing my husband from me and my beloved Duke's father. Abigail was hurt to tears. Her entire world and way of life were crumbling. Furthermore, she felt envious of Rachel as she had lost her father at an early age and had never experienced true paternal love and care while Nicholas's daughter was now basking in his attention. Abigail was well aware of how irrational her feelings were, but nonetheless, she found herself on the path of competing for Nicholas's attention. Typically, women compete with their equals. After all, a rival is someone who opposes you and seeks to win, surpass, or outdo you in some way. Abigail, however, saw her competition in a teenage girl. She felt ashamed that such a bitter feeling had emerged towards the girl, and in the battle for Nicholas's attention, he had become the ultimate prize. Don't make a tragedy out of this situation. Yes, it's all very unpleasant, but it's not as terrible as you think. Just accept it for your own well-being, Megan advised her daughter. And you're telling me this, a woman who immediately divorced when she found out her husband impregnated his lover? Abigail protested. You have some double standards, Mom. You didn't tolerate it for a day, and now you're telling me to accept everything as it is? Don't compare them. These are two completely different stories. Nicholas didn't betray you, unlike your father, Megan reminded her daughter. Your husband's involvement with Rachel's mother was before you two even met, and he had no idea about it. Don't blame him. Ultimately, he's just as much a victim of circumstances as you are. This doesn't make it any easier for me. Our life will never be the same now. Every time I think about Rachel constantly being on the horizon and her mother along with her, I feel sick. Abigail shared her concerns. Don't worry prematurely. Get to know this Rachel. Learn more about her. Maybe she's truly a good girl, as Nicholas says. Try to look at this from a positive perspective. Our Duke will finally have the sister he's always dreamed of. This candid conversation with her daughter rekindled old wounds in Megan's soul. She remembered her ex-husband and how she once loved him. How beautifully their family life began and how absurdly it ended. For the first time in many years, she wondered if there was some share of blame for their breakup. After all, it's not for nothing that they say both partners are at fault in a separation. Perhaps she devoted too much time to raising Abigail while her husband also needed her. He needed her warmth, affection, and simple human participation. And what he lacked at home, he sought and found elsewhere. Megan took out her laptop registered on a social network, and typed her ex-husband's name into the search engine. One of the first results was his profile. It wasn't difficult for her to find Trevor, as he hadn't changed much over the years. His toned figure and military bearing remained the same, with only a touch of gray in his hair, which suited him well. Trevor's profile contained many photos, one of him fishing, another of him relaxing by the sea, and yet another of him confidently riding a horse. It seemed that this man's life had been vivid and full. In a couple of photos, a woman appeared. Megan immediately recognized the same nurse from the sanatorium, although she had visibly gained weight and no longer resembled a queen. Each photo with her had a caption, with my beloved wife. So, that self-satisfied upstart did manage to do what she couldn't do herself, Tane Trevor, Megan noted to herself. 
Are they still together? I wonder, is he truly happy with her? Hello, Trevor. How's life, she wrote, giving in to a fleeting sense of curiosity and pressed the key. As soon as the message was sent, Megan immediately regretted her decision. What the heck am I doing? She scolded herself. Why am I writing to someone who has even forgotten my name? The response didn't take long. Fifteen minutes later, she received a message from Trevor. I'm very glad to receive a message from you. Although I must admit, I'm quite surprised. I've also tried to find you or Abigail on the internet many times, but I assumed you wouldn't want to communicate with me. You're probably still angry with me, and rightfully so. I feel very guilty towards you, Megan, and towards our daughter as well. But what can we do now? The past is set in stone, and there is no way to change it. So, let bygones be bygones. Tell me, how have you been all these years? Married? How is Abigail? The man bombarded her with questions. A correspondence began between the former spouses, from which Megan learned that Trevor had married the same woman he left her for and had two sons with her. After three days of online communication, he proposed to meet. After all, as he put it, they had much to discuss, mutual friends, memories. Without much thought, she agreed to meet him at a restaurant. When she arrived, he was already waiting for her with a bottle of champagne and appetizers. In the candlelight, a bit tipsy, they indulged in nostalgia. Do you remember how we went to the sea on our honeymoon? Trevor asked. How we drank homemade wine on the beach straight from the bottle and snacked on apricots. Do you remember how we skinny dipped on that wild beach in the moonlight? She echoed. They joked and laughed a lot. Trevor was generous with compliments, noting how beautiful Megan looked. In their evening with Nicholas, an atmosphere of romance prevailed, and from the outside, it would be easy to think that it was a date between two lovers rather than former spouses. Megan woke up in a hotel room, tightly held in Trevor's arms. He was fast asleep, his cheek pressed against her. In the woman's mind, the events of the previous crazy night flashed, and she felt a warmth from the memories alone. Kisses in the taxi, embraces, this hotel, and the intense desire that engulfed both of them. Megan pinched herself to make sure it wasn't a dream. Seems like I overdid it with the champagne and lost my vigilance, she thought, feeling like a young girl who had been seduced. She carefully slipped out from under Trevor's strong arm and reached for the bedside table where his mobile phone was lying. Megan had noticed the night before how Trevor had turned off the sound on his phone before succumbing to passion. On the phone screen, there were five missed calls from a contact named Wife. I wonder what he told her. It's unlikely that he mentioned going on a date with me, she thought and smirked to herself. She switched to the front camera, smiled broadly, and took a revealing selfie next to the sleeping, unsuspecting Trevor. Then she sent this intimate photo to his legal wife, signing it with the words of an old proverb, he who laughs last, laughs best. Megan had no intention of winning Trevor back, let alone becoming the mistress of her ex-husband. But she couldn't resist taking advantage of the opportunity. The temptation was just too great. It was an elaborate revenge to punish the self-assured Trevor's wife and, so to speak, humble her. To show that she wasn't entirely wrong. And that the man who had once gotten lost in her tight embrace was still wandering through life to this day. Megan quietly dressed, trying not to make any noise to avoid waking Trevor. Sending him an airy kiss and a farewell glance, she left the hotel room. Megan knew this was their last meeting. When she returned home, the first thing she did was delete her social media account. Her ex-husband had none of her contact information, not her phone number or address, absolutely nothing. And even with all his desire, Trevor wouldn't be able to find her in a million-person city. 
She was sure that after everything that had happened, he would undoubtedly want to do so. Meanwhile, her daughter, Abigail, was trying to maintain composure for the sake of her family. And she was doing reasonably well, until during cleaning, she stumbled upon a receipt. It turned out that Nicholas had sent flowers to Sevastopol. However, her husband didn't deny anything. Yes, I sent a bouquet to my daughter for her birthday, and I believe it's the least I could do. I want to shower my girl with all the presents I should have given her. You know how much I dreamed of having a daughter. Now I regret that she's far away from me, not in front of my eyes. I would pamper her like a real princess, Nicholas explained. Abigail was overwhelmed by blind jealousy, and she couldn't help but start another argument. All your free time is spent chatting with that girl. You've completely forgotten about your own son and your legal wife, she scolded Nicholas. I keep hearing Rachel this, Rachel that from you all the time. I'm sick of your daughter. I'm just sharing my thoughts and feelings with you, her husband calmly responded. You accused me of being secretive. Now that I'm open and honest, you don't like what you hear. I don't understand you. Nothing seems to satisfy you. I thought you'd be happy for me. And what is there to be happy about? Please tell me. Our family is falling apart. It's as if you're always thinking about her, not about me and Duke, Abigail said with frustration. You know how difficult this is for me psychologically. My head is spinning from all of this. I haven't even recovered from the last failed attempt to get pregnant, and now all of this. I'm finding it hard to accept all of this, and right now, more than ever, I need your support, your strong shoulder by my side. But you're not here. My love, please forgive me. You're right, I do think a lot about Rachel, but I can't help it. All of this happened so suddenly, so strangely, so unexpectedly. I haven't even come to terms with it myself. I'm experiencing a whole range of emotions. All these years, I lived with the thought that I had one child, our Duke. And now I can't adjust to the fact that I have an adult daughter, Nicholas confessed. I want to get to know her better. I think it would be a good idea to invite her to stay with us during the winter holidays. So she can settle in, get to know her little brother, and get used to us. I think it's a great idea. What do you say? Abigail was almost suffocating with anger. Her eyes were burning with fury. She had just been talking to her husband about herself, her innermost feelings, and he had turned the whole conversation back to Rachel. Don't even dream that I will accept your Rachel in our home. As long as I'm in charge here, there's no room for another woman, Abigail firmly stated, ready to pounce on her husband with her fists. Let me remind you, dear, that this house is just as much yours as it is mine, the husband pointed out. We both own the property equally, and I plan to divide my share among the children in the future. And since Rachel is just as much my child as Duke, I want to give her a share as well. It's only fair. So, whether you like it or not, my daughter will have the full right to live under this roof, just like you and our son. Abigail was literally shaking with anger. Well, this is news. You've already divided our property. Pretty quickly. You can sign whatever you want and for whoever you want, but I don't care. She won't set foot here. You know me, I'll lie flat on the doorstep, but I won't let your Rachel in, the furious woman declared to her husband. Well, then we'll do without her. Nicholas raised his voice. In that case, I'll go to my daughter myself. Yes, by all means, go wherever you want. You don't have to come back, snapped Abigail heatedly. The spouses didn't speak for three days, and on the fourth day, Nicholas left for Sevastopol on an early flight. It's been two days already, and there's no sign of Nicholas. Abigail complained to her mother. He hasn't even called once. 
I don't know if he made it, where he is, what's happening to him. Well, what are you waiting for? Take the initiative and call your husband yourself, Megan suggested. What about my pride? I won't be the first to write to him because I see myself as the victim in this whole story, Abigail replied. But aren't you afraid that if he meets up with Stacy, his old feelings will flare up even stronger? They say that first love is never forgotten. Because of your pride, you might lose your husband, dear. Well, let it be, Abigail sobbed. I don't understand what you're trying to achieve. Divorce? Well, you're already on the edge, her mother remarked. I don't know what to think anymore, Abigail sighed. Of course, I don't want a divorce. Maybe I'm also to blame for the situation that's unfolded. But can't Nicholas understand me? The news of his illegitimate daughter hit me like a ton of bricks. Why is Nicholas so selfish? Why didn't he even consider how difficult it might be for me to accept all of this? Why didn't he give me a chance to get used to the idea and come to terms with it? It seems to me that both of you are selfish, her mother replied. But you have to be wise if you want to save your marriage. You should have talked to Rachel yourself, shown cunning, become friends with someone your husband admires so much. Show him that you are his ally, not his opponent. And, at the same time, let this girl know that you and her father are a united front. Well, if Rachel had stayed with you for some time, you'd have thought differently. Then your husband would still be with you. But now, you're sitting here wondering where he's gone. Whether Nicholas will come back to you or not. And what should I do now? Is there really nothing left to fix? Abigail asked. Now all that's left is to wait and hope, Megan sighed. Understand, dear, to avoid a breakup in relationships, you need to consider and coordinate your actions with your loved one. And you have to do it through respectful dialogue and acknowledging each other's feelings. Ultimatums and conflicts won't bring any success. Only through reasonable compromises and mutual respect can you achieve harmony. Abigail was torn up inside, and she couldn't find peace. Her mother's words kept her restless. What if Nicholas really decided to leave her for his former love? What if, after so many years, he met Stacy again, and his extinguished feelings reignited with new strength? Rachel's mother might turn out to be much smarter and quicker-witted than Abigail. What if she didn't hesitate and took advantage of the situation, the discord between the spouses, and won Nicholas over? Abigail scolded herself for being so short-sighted and foolish. For letting her emotions get the best of her. Instead of becoming an ally to her beloved husband, she entered into an open conflict with him and soured their relationship. I'll accept his daughter and I won't blame him for anything as long as Nicholas comes back to me, Abigail decided. She tried to convince herself that there were no strangers' children. True, in her view, this applied to charitable actions, support funds, children's homes, and so on. In these cases, any involvement and support do not carry any household burdens. By showing care and involvement in this way, a person does not have to accept someone else's child into their family. However, with Rachel, things were somewhat different. Nevertheless, for the sake of her marriage's well-being, Abigail was willing to endure and bear anything. She was determined to make any sacrifice as long as Nicholas was by her side. The husband returned home after four days. By this point, Abigail had fully realized that she couldn't imagine her life without him. She was determined to do everything it took to regain his favor, trust, and love. She fussed around Nicholas, trying to serve him in every possible way. She deliberately didn't ask about the trip to avoid bringing up the uncomfortable topic. She patiently waited for her husband to initiate the conversation himself. Duke was constantly around his father, urging him to play pirates, 
but Nicholas didn't engage in his son's activities. He was somber and contemplative, smoking one cigarette after another, and eventually, he opened a bottle of cognac. This was a bad sign, as Nicholas hardly ever consumed alcohol. The last time he drank was at his mother's funeral. That's why Abigail immediately guessed that something serious was going on with her husband. Does he really want to tell me it's over? Abigail wondered, sneaking glances at her perplexed husband. Unable to bear the uncertainty, Abigail decided to clarify the situation. Why drag it out? It was better to get to the bottom of things right away. Have you met with Stacy? She asked her husband. I did, he replied. And what? Do you want to leave me for her? Why are you starting this again? Please, don't bring up your baseless suspicions now, her husband responded, pouring himself a shot of cognac. I can see that something is bothering you. I'm your wife. At least for now, she added. I want to know what's happening. Nicholas raised his eyes to his wife, filled with sadness and grief. Stacy is dying, he quietly said. She only has a couple of months left. That's why she insisted that Rachel find me. After Stacy's death, there will be no one to take care of her. She'll be an orphan. What do you mean, no one? What about you? The girl has a biological father, you said, Abigail whispered, embracing her husband. And she has a wonderful little brother, too. We'll take her into our family. We have plenty of room in our home. She'll live with us as a family member. Are you serious about this? But you didn't want her to. Nicholas began to say, I was wrong, Abigail interrupted her husband. I should have been more sensible. I've reconsidered my stance on this situation. The girl isn't to blame for how things turned out. Perhaps she's been the unluckiest of all in this whole story. Abigail's decision to accept Rachel into her family was not easy. She understood that she would have to face many difficulties. She had heard various stories about stepchildren's unacceptable behavior, how they would try to drive their stepmother out of the house, manipulate their parents against each other, and try to win their father over to their side. Additionally, Abigail feared that Nicholas's daughter, as wonderful as she might be, would always remind her of the woman her husband had once been madly in love with. In a month and a half, Stacy was no longer with them, and Nicholas went to the city to bid farewell to his former beloved and bring Rachel, who was now orphaned, back with him. In the meantime, Abigail was preparing a room for the new family member. She selected bed linen, a robe, slippers, and pajamas for Rachel herself. She scoured the stores in search of a cozy blanket, a mug, and a unique nightlight. She called her husband several times to inquire about Rachel's favorite dishes and fruits. She wanted to be fully prepared for her arrival. The girl should feel genuinely welcomed, and Abigail wanted to surround her with care and win her over. She aimed to show Nicholas and his daughter that she wasn't an enemy but a friend. Abigail was nervous before her first meeting with her husband's daughter, but when she saw her at her doorstep, all doubts vanished instantly. Her heart ached with both pain and tenderness as she saw the slender, tearful girl. It was evident that this girl was deeply suffering, mourning her irreparable loss. Abigail resolved to do everything in her power to ease Rachel's sorrow to the best of her ability. She reasoned that if there was a sincere desire to build a relationship in their now expanded family, along with patience and a certain feminine wisdom, everything would surely work out. It wasn't easy for her, but she understood that Rachel finding herself in the company of strangers was a thousand times harder. Abigail didn't rush to get closer to Nicholas's daughter. She was afraid of scaring Rachel and took gradual and delicate steps towards getting to know her better. 
and so began their new life in which Rachel became the center of the family, the very son whose warm rays the household wanted to bask in. Contrary to Abigail's fears, the children quickly became friends. There was no animosity between them. Rachel willingly played with her younger brother, and Duke had an unwavering affection for his older sister. You were right, dear. Rachel is truly an extraordinary girl, Abigail admitted to her husband. She hadn't expected herself to bond so deeply with her husband's daughter. The initial jealousy she felt soon dissipated thanks to their good relationship. Nicholas couldn't believe that this complex situation had been resolved so well. He was happy that his wife had found the strength to embrace Rachel and had developed genuine sympathy for her. And when, a year later, Abigail showed her husband the pregnancy test with two lines, tears welled up in his eyes. We're going to have a baby. Abigail announced. I almost forgot about it. It's hard to believe. It's like the saying goes, first a nanny, then a doll. Megan rejoiced. Her son and daughter-in-law had been trying for so many years to conceive a child. They had almost given up hope, and now, finally, a miracle had happened. Now Abigail and Nicholas are the parents of three children, daughter Rachel and sons Duke and Lucas. They are all dear to Abigail, and she knows that Rachel came into her life for a reason. It must have been meant to be.